My name is Abigail Curtis, and I am a graduate student in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at UCLA. I am interested in how differences in the shapes of skulls relates to how animals use them. Growing up, most of us heard the story of the three little pigs and the big, bad wolf. The first pig builds his house out of straw, which the wolf huffs and puffs and blows away with ease. The first pig runs to the second pig's house for shelter. The second pig built his house out of sticks, which are stronger than straw, but the wolf is still able to blow the house down. The first two pigs run to the third pig's house for shelter. The third pig built his house out of bricks, and no matter how hard he tries, the wolf can't blow it down. This story teaches us early on the importance of building structures to withstand whatever forces they are subjected to. You can imagine that if the pigs were up against, say, the big bad mouse, they probably would have been fine in the straw house and it wouldn't have been worth the time and energy to make bricks and build a brick house. This same principle also applies to bone. Bone is an expensive material for our bodies to maintain and bones do not tend to be overbuilt. For example, if we compare the skull of a fox with that of an African wild dog, we see that the fox has a much more gracile skull with slender jaws and few bony crests that is strong enough to kill small prey, but not strong enough to kill big prey. Whereas the wild dogs have robust skulls with large crests where massive jaw closing muscles attach, making it well adapted to subdue large prey. I am studying how the internal architecture of the skull contributes to skull function in mammalian carnivores, the group that includes lions, pandas, foxes, and otters. Carnivores come in all shapes and sizes, with diets that range from herbivorous to carnivorous. We know a lot about how differences in the external shape of skulls relate to utility, but know relatively little about the skull interior. In order to see inside of skulls, without destroying them, I use CT scans, which are three-dimensional x-rays taken from museum specimens. The CT scanner produces hundreds of x-ray slices throughout the skull that I can stack together to make a three-dimensional digital replica of the original skull, and I can easily visualize structures inside of the skull, such as the brain or hollow spaces called sinuses, which are the focus of my research. I can then examine how they vary among different species and how differences in the size and shape of sinuses relate to skull function. By observing how the inside of the skull varies in addition to the outside, we can gain a more complete understanding of how bone shape relates to function and can learn about the roles that species play in their environments. To learn more about my research, you can email me at abigailacurtis at gmail.com and stay tuned for my upcoming website.